Welcome to DIY Guitar Making at Eric Schaefer Guitars. I just finished laying out a new design for a 13 fret to the body parlor guitar. And it gave me the idea that, well, hey, I thought it would be a really nice reference type video to make a quick video showing just a couple basic steps for laying out the most basic parameters of a guitar design around which some of the more interesting aesthetic elements of your guitar can be designed. So when you're first getting started with guitar making, if this is your literal first guitar, I truly recommend just doing something like this. What I mean by this is going out and purchasing a set of plans. Don't shoot yourself in the foot and get invested in all this design stuff when you haven't even built a guitar yet or or five or six guitars even better but at least that very first one don't do that don't do that don't do that okay so i want to make this a very quick guide here so that can be an easy reference anytime you want to lay out those basic parameters. So let's jump right into it. This is that guitar that I just designed here. I'm gonna get this out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and use tracing paper, but you can use really any kind of paper for this. I would recommend, there's lots of different writing implements, but I would recommend a mechanical pencil because the tip of a mechanical pencil is consistent. It's always of the same width whereas a regular number two sharpened pencil will change its width as it gets worn down. So mechanical pencil is very good. Uh, small side note here, we will not be using the mechanical pencil though, simply because you won't be able to see on the camera what I'm writing very well. So just for the purposes of this video, since this is just a video exercise, we're gonna use a Sharpie, but I don't recommend using a Sharpie when you do this at home. Okay guys, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do, step number one, so give yourself a long center line. How long? I just go the full length of my 36 inch ruler, which is overly long, which is what we want, okay? Just an overly long straight line. Our entire guitar now will be designed around this center line. Next, I'm going to square a line right at the top. This is also a square line that can be overly long. Okay, if you need uh, a number for this, I would say about, uh, that's probably about five inches long, but the idea is it's longer than we need it to be. Okay, and then we're gonna, on this line, we're gonna mark our fingerboard width at the nut, okay? This is usually a pretty common measurement you can find um, even from the consumer's perspective when you're buying a Martin guitar or something like that. These specs are usually pretty available and you can copy uh, some common specs that you find online. In this case, I happen to be doing an inch and three quarters, which is a fairly common width at the nut. So split in half, that would be seven eighths of an inch on each side. All right, so this is the width of the fingerboard at the nut. We're now gonna measure inward for our string locations. A pretty standard measurement for this that you could just copy right here is an eighth of an inch. So we're gonna mark an eighth of an inch inward from the outside edge on both sides. Next, I'm going to mark where my neck to body joint is. This will always be at a particular fret location, either the 12th fret or the 14th fret, okay? I just mentioned before that I'm doing a 13th fret to the body parlor guitar. That's unusual, don't worry about that. You will almost certainly be doing either the 12th fret or the 14th fret. The 12th fret is kind of a older thing, a bit more of a vintage vibe, 
whereas the 14 frets to the body really is the dominant layout for a modern acoustic guitar. So most of you guys will probably be marking out the 14th fret at this point. Um, I'm not going to get into how you figure out exactly where the 14th fret is, and it's completely unnecessary to do so. Online, there are all kinds of great calculators. If you know your scale length, then you can easily derive the 14th fret location using one of those calculators. Also, if you have a template, like a fret slotting template, which you will be using for the build process, you could just use that to mark out your 14th fret. So we're going to be doing a 24.5 inch scale length here. So I can line that up right on the nut right there. And I'm going to mark, again, in most cases the 14th fret, in some cases the 12th. I'm going to go ahead and mark the 13th here because, um, again, I'm just kind of modeling after the guitar that I just designed over there. Okay. So this would be your neck joint, okay? All right, and then while we have the template out here, or the ruler if you're using that to get your neck joint, while we have this out, I'm gonna go ahead and also mark our full scale length. So there's two ways and I'm sorry, I don't want to say full scale length because I don't want to confuse you guys. I'm going to say nominal scale length, and I'll get to what that means in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and mark our nominal scale length. I can use my template here and accurately get that scale length by simply marking the 12th fret and then flipping this around, placing this back on the 12th fret, because the 12th fret, that's our octave, and that's half of our nominal scale length. So if I flip this around and then mark right there, I've doubled that 12th fret distance and given myself my full nominal scale length. I'm gonna write right here, nominal SL for scale length. Okay. Now, if you don't have a template, of course, and you know your scale length, you can just take a long ruler and mark it that way. Here, I'm just double checking, and I can see that I have 24.563, uh, technically, is, is exactly what the nominal scale length is. 24.563 inch. Okay. Now, that's the nominal scale length, which means in name only. That's what nominal means. Our actual speaking length of the string is slightly longer due to compensation. To keep this video brief, I'm not going to talk about compensation and why we need it, but just understand that it is a slight lengthening of the scale length in order to make everything intonate as accurately as a guitar can. And so compensation is another one of those things where you can use an online calculator. I'm going to leave uh, in this video, when I edit the video, there will be a link that I will give for a specific calculator that I think is really good online calculator for figuring out your compensation. So with that calculator, I was able to determine that the added compensation is 0.214 on the base side and 0.0977 on the treble side. So now, because I'm trying to find a mark along the center line, our treble side's out here, our base side is out here, right? If I add these numbers together and then divide them by two, that will give me the compensation that I want to mark at the center of the saddle. So when we have our scale length plus compensation, that gives us our exact saddle location. This number, by the way, for our added compensation is generally around 0.15 inches, okay? 
if you run out this math on the online calculator that I mentioned, you will find that yours will be slightly higher or lower of that number, but it's going to be basically 0.15 inches. So I'm going to go ahead for the purposes of this and just use 0.15. And in fact, if you want to use 0.15 inches, feel free to do so. Uh, I, your guitar will be I almost want to say almost uh, <laughs> accurate enough if you just simply use 0.15 inches. But I do welcome you to go ahead and try out that calculator, if only to understand the process better for yourself. All right, so 0.15 inches. I'm going to go ahead and use my caliper for this. By the way, using a dial caliper for layout work is um, it's a good idea to have one for certain measurements like this. So this second line right here is our compensation. I'm not going to mark that on here because I don't want to crowd the space, but just understand here, I'll put a, a little C there for compensation. That's our compensation. That is the center of our saddle at the center of our guitar longitudinal center line, okay? From our compensation mark, which is the center of our saddle, we want to measure back for the pinhole lo locations on the bridge. We want to measure back a half inch. Now at the pinhole location, we're gonna measure outward widthwise for our string spacing at the bridge. And in this case, it's going to be two and a quarter inch. All right, now it starts to get fun. We can go ahead and connect our string points because we have the locations of our outer strings at the nut and the locations of our outer strings at the bridge. Now remember, we're connecting with that inner line at the nut because the outer line is the edge of the fingerboard. It is not the location of the string. So make sure you're connecting with the right line. Now jumping back to our neck joint, which is this one right here. Okay, that was the 12th fret. There's our 13th fret. Again, usually that's the 14th. In this case, it's a little bit weird. And at that location, I'm going to square a line And at that location, I'm going to measure for the width of the fingerboard based off of the outside edge of those strings at the neck joint. And a good standard number there is 3 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so if, if you recall, we measured an eighth of an inch off of the edge at the nut it's a little bit wider, 3 16 of an inch, at the neck to body joint. And that's because we actually want the fretboard to taper outward a little bit more than the strings themselves taper outward. This is really just to prevent uh, the situation where you build a guitar where the strings tend to fall off of the bevels. Okay, so it's always a little bit desirable to have the fretboard flare out slightly more than the splay of the strings themselves. So now we can connect those lines to give us our fretboard. And you can even go ahead and run that line out over the body a little bit because your fretboard tongue is going to extend over the body a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up by, I'll just take my new mold that I made here for my parlor and line that up and trace it out. All right, so this is what at least I consider to be a starting point for designing a guitar. Uh, after this, I'll usually jump up here, add about a quarter inch or whatever you want for the width of your, your nut. Okay, so let's say add a quarter inch there, square that line across, 
then I can either design or trace from an existing template my headstock shape. I can also determine my inside string holes based off of the outside string holes. And then take a straight edge and draw those lines up towards the nut to determine where my tuner hole locations are going to be. And of course you can have your tuner hole locations. They can be off to the side. Um, I'm sure you guys have all seen this. It's kind of the classic design where the strings meet the nut and then splay outward towards the tuner holes. Or you can do a straight pull design, which is what I like to do, where the strings meet the nut and then continue riding straight towards their tuner holes, okay? And in that case, it's very important to draw all this out to determine exactly where those tuner holes should go to meet those strings. Side note there, most people just put the tuner holes off to the side and have the strings splay out to meet wherever the tuner holes are. It's just easier design-wise. From there, you can draw your bridge and then Again, this gets a little more complicated, but we can determine where the X brace is based off of where the wings of the bridge are. Uh, from that, we can determine where a sound hole it should be and where our transverse bar should be. And after that, I mean, you're pretty much there. You have a, you know, a couple other things to consider where your other braces, your finger braces, and your tone bars, where they come off of the X brace. And where your blocks are, right? You wanna have a neck block here and you're gonna have a tail block back here. In a nutshell, that's your layout. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.